Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Washington. Nancy Fulbray, in her blog on the New York Times, wrote the following. The Great Recession has sometimes been dubbed the Man Session because it drove unemployment among men higher than unemployment among women. So how is this affecting families? How is this affecting the future outlook for the population as a whole when it comes to unemployment? What might be the social consequences of men being more reliant on women for, the fam for family support? Now joining us to talk about all of this is Nancy Fulbray. Nancy is a professor of economics at the University of Massachusetts, Amherst. Her research focuses on the interface between feminist theory and political economy, and her recent book is Saving State U. Thanks for joining us. So first of all, describe the phenomena. What's happening? Well, um, male unemployment is significantly higher than female unemployment right now. That's not terribly surprising. Typical in recessions for men to be more affected because they're employed in more uh, cyclical industries like manufacturing that go up up and down more than other industries. As but, opposed to service sector, like right. nurses or... Right, like but the, the more disturbing trend is a, a longer term decline in manufacturing employment. If you look at the last 10 years, even counting the boom years, uh, employment in that sector has declined. And that's one of the factors that's driving higher unemployment among men. So outsourcing of jobs and automation domestically is hitting men more than women because men are more in the sector affected by right. this. So what, that's, would you, what are some of the numbers? Well, uh, manufacturing employment uh, for men, about 17 million in 2000, down to about uh, uh, 12 million today. And employment in health and education services, which is kind of the opposite, the mirror image sector, predominantly female sector, has gone up uh, by about that same amount. So you can see a real, a real divergence in the, in the, the demand for uh, traditionally women's jobs has increased uh, while that for traditionally male jobs has gone down. So let's talk a little bit about the, the, the manufacturing sector. Um, the, the numbers of the skill level in a lot of manufacturing is going up. The education level needed to work in factories that have robotics and such are going up. So you would think women could be more in that sector, but I guess, so. but is it more traditional uh, reasons why women are not more in the manufacturing sector? Because a lot of manufacturing seems to be no good reason why there aren't more women there. Yeah, that's right. That's a good point. Well, it's, it's partly compositional effects that, that uh, women employed in manufacturing, many of them were in the textile sector in, in a, a, a part of manufacturing that's suffered particularly big job losses. So a lot of women who were in manufacturing have, have been have just are, left ha, have already been uh, kind of wiped out. But also in general, there's been less uh, uh, occupational desegregation in blue collar jobs and in manufacturing than in other parts of the economy. To what extent then are our families now, the, it's the woman in the family that's the breadwinner and the men is at home getting depressed looking for a job? Well, it's, uh, 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 women's employment has definitely gone up. Women are now almost 50 percent uh, of employees on non-agricultural payrolls. They're still more likely to work part-time than men are. So um, that, uh, it's not a, a perfect comparison, but, but uh, it's certainly a big change. And women are now more likely to be um, breadwinners in families where uh, men are, are, are unemployed. And I assume, I assume in, uh, a lot of these families, women are coming home and then having to deal with the housework and the kids as well on top of everything. Uh, well, I think there's probably some bargaining and renegotiation of housework going on. We don't know exactly how much. So how do you compare male and female unemployment? 10.6% for men, 8.9% for women. So it's high for both. Uh, but um, definitely uh, men uh, having a harder time finding Now, we jobs. know unemployment's higher in urban areas Unemployment's than higher in urban areas. areas. Uh, unemployment is way higher uh, for blacks and Hispanics. Unemployment is uh, very high for young people, and unemployment is also unusually high uh, for older people, for individuals 55 and over. Uh, so it's a big, pretty severe and pretty uneven impact overall. Now, there does not seem to be any pu public policy in place that at the structural level will actually either, in, either in terms of short-term unemployment, we're talking about perhaps a decade of these kind of unemployment numbers, longer term in terms of a revitalization of American manufacturing and, and jobs more typically men were involved with, although I think over time that's changing and would likely change more anyway as manufacturing becomes more mm -hmm. automated. Uh, but it looks like we're looking at a decade of what we got now, at least. I think it's very disturbing. I, I think uh, we definitely need more job training and more education to help workers adapt to a pretty significant structural shift in the kinds of jobs that are available. 
you know, the Obama administration uh, has talked about that to some extent with the expansion of community colleges and community college enrollments. Those are, uh, have become a kind of focal point for vocational training. Uh, but the future of those initiatives now is very much in doubt given the state of the budget and, and political stalemate. I mean, you could say one solution is men should do jobs that aren't traditionally for men and learn how to be nurses and such. But that does, on itself doesn't solve anything anyway, because you've already got 8.9% amongst women who are, who are quite happy to take women's jobs. Uh, so, I mean, at most you'd have men replacing some women who might be working otherwise. That's right. I don't think just some redistribution isn't going to solve the problem. But I think it's also true that we should have, be looking for more flexibility in the types of jobs that both men and women can do. And that's something that job training and, and expanded education could help accomplish. But you do get, in, in terms of, if we're looking at a decade of these kinds of employment rates, and a lot of people are talking about that, even conservative economics, uh, economists are talking about this. What is a public policy solution then? Some people are talking about direct jobs programs. And well, I'm an advocate of direct jobs uh, creation, and I think that uh, the green jobs ideas, the green jobs concept is um, a very good one and one that could help create jobs for both men and women. Uh, unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be the political will these days to move forward with it. What would it look like in your mind? Well. Um, I think we should start talking about solutions, whether they're politically possible or not, because what appears to be politically possible also seems to be ineffective. I think the best, the best plan in terms of a specific job creation program is one that was devised by my colleague Bob Poland at the Political Economy Research Institute. And it calls for some direct uh, training and investment in weatherization and energy conservation in homes, which is uh, a very cost-effective and, I might add, very labor-intensive uh, process. And it also calls for investment in, in green manufacturing and development of, of green technologies. Uh, you know, right now, uh, U.S. public policies subsidize fossil fuel production and fossil fuel consumption in a variety of ways. And if we could shift those subsidies Including away... Including corn in a big way. Yeah, exactly. If we could shift the structure of those subsidies uh, towards uh, renewables, uh, I think we could, we could really get some traction. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.